Through two rounds of the 2011 championship, the Pro Circuit Kawasaki team has captured their early season momentum. At Hangtown, the green team unveiled their latest superstar, Grand Terrace California's Blake Baggett. Blake Baggett wins Hangtown! Incredible! At round two in Texas, former world champion Tyler Rattray got the job done for his third career overall win in America. Tyler Rattray wins the second moto here in Texas, and with that, he should go 2-1 to take the overall. And while he has yet to taste victory in the young season, Dean Wilson leads the championship standings heading into round three. It's time to drop the gate on 250 motocross from historic High Point Raceway. Welcome to High Point Raceway in Mount Morris, Pennsylvania. Round three of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship. The 250 class coverage continues with the Rockstar Energy Drink, High Point National in the rolling hills of southwestern Pennsylvania. Hello, everyone. Jason Wygant, Jeff Emmick, going to give you the call, as always, on speed. What has been a very exciting 250 series so far should get even better today. And we'll give you an idea of what we have in store for the racing as we look at the big picture. These are the storylines that we're going to be following at High Point. And we have an even bigger picture that has rolled in with a big weather front that has turned this track very muddy for the second moto. But the stories coming into this one, the dominance of the Pro Circuit team, they have won the first two rounds of racing. The boys in green and the Kawasaki's have been dominant thus far. They've won the races. They lead the championship standings. And Marvin Musquin, watch this. Oh! The Frenchman who was expected to contend for the championship this year broke his thumb in that crash. Justin Barsha, Honda rider, went down and his bike went flying into Musquin. Musquin will not be here. He's expected to be out at least eight weeks. So too bad for the uh, friendly Frenchman. We will not be able to see him in action today from Pennsylvania. Now, one of the other international riders is making waves, Tyler Rattray, the veteran from South Africa, won our last race of the tour from Texas and won this race in Pennsylvania last year. Rattray is second in the series standings coming into this event, but he is definitely beginning to feel it in his third year of racing in America. So Tyler Rattray, can he repeat and win two in a row at high point? Well, definitely these track conditions being so muddy and so gnarly are definitely going to play in his favor. Let's talk to and learn more about Tyler Rattray. It's always been a dream of mine as a kid, watching on TV, the guys like McGrath, Emig, Rick Johnson, all of them racing here in America. And uh, when you're a kid, that's all you want to do is you want to go over there and you want to be like them. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, really blessed to be in the position I am in and uh, to be over here in America and uh, racing on such a professional level. Obviously, it takes a lot of hard work and determination to get to this level, but uh, once you've reached it and uh, you're successful like a lot of us are, it's, uh, it's really awesome. Obviously, for me, it takes also a lot of sacrifices. I've, I've given up everything I had in South Africa. Um, I moved to Belgium for eight years and managed to win a world championship there and then uh, came over here and now racing for Mitch's team. And, uh, Obviously, this is not South Africa, but uh, this is where where the gold crown of motocross is, is, uh, is in America. And uh, I'm just really blessed uh, to be here and uh, racing in America. Let's give you the 4-1-1 on how motocross works. We race two races in each class every weekend. This is your 250 class for 250cc engines. Each moto lasts 30 minutes and two laps. We'll total up the scores from both races to determine an overall winner for the day. And in case the scores are tied through the first two motos, we will break that tie with the better score in the second race. And now we'll give you an idea what the track looks like here at High Point. Jeff Emig, take us for a lap. Well, yeah, here's what it looks on paper, basically. You got this really st uh, steep uphill start that's really deep. Uh, earlier today in qualifying practice, uh, the track was in really good shape. During the first moto, this hard clay really packed down, and some of the off-camber turns got really slippery. Uh, some lines have uh, formed. Not really that rough today, but since moto one here leading into moto two, the skies opened up. We had quite a bit of rain uh, come down, and so now the track's going to be really, really uh, wet, muddy, slippery, and uh, it's going to be much more difficult than what it was here for Darren Durham. Uh, w with our GoPro on board. This is earlier today in qualifying practice. 
So you can see how some of these ruts start to form on the off-camber turns. Now that it's wet and muddy out there, those ruts are going to be even deeper, even softer, and it's going to be really choppy. So Darren Durham, very strong here. He knows the short way around this track because he's born and raised in Pennsylvania. Grew up here racing this track on a, as a kid on the uh, mini-sized motorcycles and still running strong today. Yeah, this is going to be one of the tougher sections on the track here for Moto2 is all these rollers, the riders are going to be riding real high, but as that line starts to get beat up and it gets burnt out, uh, you're going to have to find some new lines on the track. So there's the bike of Darren Durham, the 37, the mechanics going to work there. Give us the uh, keys to the race and tell us what Darren Durham needs to do here today at, uh, at Hot Point. Well, he led a majority of Moto One, which was his first time up front. As always, got to get a good start, but the track is so wet and sloppy and so much mud, you just, the whole shot's going to be key. 1110 Mods built his engine. You know, they got that thing tuned to perfection and uh, use the home track knowledge. I'm sure he's ridden here plenty of times at local races, growing up as an amateur where uh, he's had to ride in these conditions. Believe in himself, he can win a moto if he gets out front again. So that's your Rocky Mountain ATV MC Keys to the race. Let's send it down to Aaron Bates on the start with a progressive pre-race report. Even though the number 25 of Ryan Sipes has been riding extremely well, he's yet to score a point so far this season. At the first race in Hangtown, he crashed moto number one, injured his wrist, and then last time we saw him was at Freestone when he pulled a muscle in his back. But just during moto number one, he cross-rutted with just a few laps to go while he was in second spot and he ended up slamming his head pretty hard, gave himself a concussion. I caught up with him while he's walking out of the Asterix Medical Unit, and the docs advised him to sit out this moto and next weekend at Bud's Creek as well. Championship's hopes are dwindling for Ryan Sykes. Let's go racing here in Pennsylvania. And one of the Kawasaki's on the inside. I think that's going to be Tyler Rattray. And then his teammate Dean Wilson battling for it. And it's going to be Wilson on the 15, outbreaking Rattray to grab the lead. I'm not sure if he outbraked him, but he came in there so hot, Rattray uh, clipped him, and Wilson kept the Kawasaki on the track and uh, therefore took the lead. So the two teammates battling it out, and you got to watch out for the 36, Cole Seeley right there on the outside on the Lucas Oil Troy Lee Honda. He will split the Monster Pro Circuit Kawasaki boys. Wait a minute, Blake Baggett, where'd he come from? He won the first motor today. And he's gotten around Rattray, and now also Sealy. He's up to second. So Blake Baggett, this is a the best start of the year we've seen for him. Now we're looking for Wilson. Looks like Nico is the 42 there on the Honda with another good start. Grab the whole shot in Moto One. And you see the towels waving right now. The Kawasaki boys continue to have it going their way as it's uh, Baggett, Sealy, Rattray, and Izzy. Dean Wilson leading them around. You see Wilson already getting a bit of a gap built up. Looks like Malcolm Stewart just behind Izzy and definitely one of the Geico riders. And we're going to try to check in with the leader. Wilson was able to make a move and get around Rattray. And Baggett is in the lead. So we did not see Wilson. All right, we do have a replay of uh, what happened to Dean Wilson. He led this thing for about three turns. Oh, OK, so this is uh, over that hip double. Wilson's still out front at this point. Oh, and then he catches a, a rut or something and goes down with the lead. Bizarre Watch crash. right here. It's, oh, his, his right hand came off the bars. Oh. Definitely an unexpected uh, yeah. hit or something when he landed off of that double. Yeah, normally one of the safer areas of the track. So just like that, Wilson goes from the lead to way back. He crashed in the first lap. That's bad news. Yeah, in, in, in Moto1, it looked like Wilson uh, had the speed to win this thing, and his teammate here, Blake Baggett, just blazed through, took the Moto on the podium. Wilson looked a little disappointed. Uh, strong ride, second, yep. but uh, disappointed. He's going to be furious now yeah. Yeah, if well, he gives up the lead, uh, giving up the lead here on Moto1. I mean, uh, flap one. on the flap one, yeah. Yeah, and he's going to be way, way back because the riders are obviously so close at the beginning of the race. You go down, you can find yourself going from first to last. Let's focus in on this battle for second, Cole Seeley and Tyler Rattray. And then right behind them, you have Izzy and Malcolm Stewart. And I don't know, you give Baggett the advantage like this off the start. He's been so strong coming through the pack late in the races. I can't imagine what he could do leading early. 
Oh, this track is so rutted, Jeff. These guys are having a tough time getting through that corner. Well, and at this point, they're trying to stay in the main groove. Now, we had a 450 moto uh, uh, just before this, uh, after it had rained, and the 450s, the track was pretty wet and sloppy everywhere. Now there's a couple of lines that have grooved in on the track. Problem with that is that everybody's going to be forced to go to that one line until that line wears out. Whoa, Seeley airing out to double here. And Rattray does not, but Rattray on the inside did not lose too much ground. Feeling their way around this track has changed so much from when they rode earlier today. It was all wet and muddy uh, after rain in between the races. So totally different track than what they had before. Looks like Izzy yeah. down at the top of the screen back there. Some yellow flags flying. There's Rattray. So Rattray in third trying to keep the heat on Sealy yeah. while Baggett gets away. And yes, we have lost Nico Izzy, who was fourth from that group due to a crash. It's going to allow Malcolm Stewart to slide up into the fourth position. Great run for Malcolm, who's just at the top of the screen here, just behind uh, Rattray. Yeah, and uh, he's just getting started as a pro. Malcolm, this is only his third ever pro motocross race. So good for him. He's definitely getting stronger and more consistent week to week. But Blake Baggett leading them around early at high point. Cole Seely said he's sick and tired of these Kawasaki boys dominating. He wants to split them. He's doing it right now. Speed's coverage of the Lucas Oil AMA Pro Moto Cross Championship is brought to you by Lucas Oil. Made in America, sold to the world. By the 2011 Toyota Tundra, one of the most capable half tons ever. And by RockyMountainMC.com, your one-stop shop for parts, apparel, and accessories. RockyMountainMC.com, get ready. It's downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Just uh, under an hour north of our track here in Mount Morris, Pennsylvania, which is basically right on the Mason-Dixon line, straddling state uh, border between Pennsylvania and West Virginia. And Blake Baggett, who is from all the way out in California, you expect, uh, man, the muddy conditions might be tough on him. Not at all. Leading the way around here at Mount Morris. I'm telling you, we spend a lot of time in SoCal there on our local tracks. It's pretty hard, Pat. Mm -hmm. Dry slick. Then they bring the water truck by and soak it down. Oh, OK. OK. okay. So uh, everybody thinks that we're out there in the desert. I'm telling you, young Blake Baggett has had uh, a lot of practice on conditions like this. Tyler Rattray has made the move around Cole Sealy to get back into second. Still a good run for Sealy who uh, won a couple of races in the Supercross Tour indoors earlier this year, has been off to a so-so start, but not able to get to the podium yet in motocross. So right now he is there in third. That's a podium position, but he's got Malcolm Stewart, Justin Barsha behind him, and a long, long, long way to go. And as the uh, name scroll across the top of your screen there, our uh, first moto leader for the majority of the race, Darren Durham, is setting in 21st right now. So not quite the start that he needed. Oh. Yeah, that was the star of the show in our first moto because he's a local guy. But it's so hard to back it up and put in two strong motos, especially when you're talking, Jeff, about young riders such as this. The 139 of Malcolm Stewart. That's his uh, James Stewart's younger brother. First year as a professional. And basically then only his third pro motocross race. Doing a good job here in fourth. But Justin Barsha on the 17, the red Honda, putting some heat on from the number five spot. And Barsha won a moto here last year, had a tough go of it in moto one here earlier today. He has his teammate Eli Tomac right behind him in sixth. And that's kind of where Tomac has been all year, fourth, fifth, sixth. That's not where Tomac was expected to be. A lot of people thought he'd be winning motos right off the bat. Right now, he's just trying to duke it out with his teammate Barsha and the 139 of Stewart. I tell you, just at the top uh, of your screen there, which would be your right now, I'm really impressed, impressed with Alex Martin, 46. He's running in seventh place and uh, hanging right here with some of the, the uh, uh, factory guys, basically. Yeah, Alex Martin is the teammate of uh, Darren Durham. That's a local team. They don't have uh, support from Factory Honda or anything like that. 11-10 mods and, and Morgantown Power Sports helping out Alex Martin and Darren Durham. Durham almost won the first race today. And Martin running inside the top 10 here in the second one. So that team's got to be happy. And let's talk about this. Barsha putting pressure on the 139 of Stewart. However, this is a different Malcolm Stewart, Jeff, than we saw at Hangtown when he led the first lap of the year and then dropped way back. Just logging solid laps here. Yeah, he's putting in a strong ride here. And you see Barsha 
He's from back east, so he's had plenty of practice and everything in his life uh, riding in the mud here, but just not quite the starts that they need to be uh, um, up front leading this moto and uh, contend with the pro circuit guys. All right, so that's fifth Barsha, and like we mentioned behind him is his uh, teammate Tomac. Let's see how long, let's see how long Stewart can hang with this pace. He went all out, spent all his energy early. Meanwhile, Barsha's had a rough go of it. Let's oh, he's making the pass, going to the inside. He's got Stewart, he's got fourth. Aaron, what are you hearing on the number 17 of Justin Barsha? Well, guys, the whole team of the number 17 has been keeping it kind of quiet, but apparently Justin Barsha has been suffering from an ear infection for the past two weeks. He did start a, a cycle of antibiotics just three days ago, but he said he is feeling slightly fatigued. Something is definitely wearing him down. But on top of that, he decided that this moto, he is definitely going to be sporting a chest protector because after that first moto, you should have seen his chest. He looked like he'd been pelted with pellets. He said the Bruce did something fierce out there today. Wow, it's a lot of issues to deal with for Barsha. Yeah, and, and uh, as far as that roost earlier today in the first moto, uh, that roost was a looser and, uh, you know, I mean, it was like a shotgun blast. Now, here in the second moto, this mud is a lot wetter, so it kind of softens the blow a little bit, takes a little bit of the sting out of it, but you can see there's plenty of roost coming up off the back tires of these machines. And we saw Tomac and Alex Martin, who we mentioned earlier, and then finally we're seeing the number 20, Making a move right now, a mistake by Martin, and that will put Brock Tickle one position further up. Tickle is your West Region Supercross champ in this 250 class, but we haven't seen much of him up front outdoors. He has really struggled to get starts so far this year, Jeff. Yeah, it just has not uh, been up front. He's had to ride from the back the whole time, and that's tough because this is such a talented group of young riders. Now Tomac on the 19, the Honda going after Stewart to uh, move one position further forward, and uh, if you're Tomac, you want to hold off uh, Tickle, because that was a, a bitter feud down at the end of that Supercross championship, which Tickle eventually won, and Tomac ended up second. Now, he doesn't want to Tickle to pass him here, so he's now going after Stewart. Now, in this situation, you can see that there definitely is a dry racing line. There'd be a couple of lines right here where it kind of opens up, and Barsha was not able to make the pass. But what you have to focus on is applying the pressure to the rider in front of you, forcing him into a mistake to force him out of the line or to do something wrong, then you can uh, take over the fast line. Yeah, so that's Tomac there on the 19, keeping the heat on Stewart, Tickle behind them, and then in front of them was Justin Barsha who made the move on Stewart. So uh, Barsha's fourth, Cole Sealy still third, Rattray second, Blake Baggett leading them around. Kind of waiting for Eli Tomac to, to get hot here started out the year so brilliantly a year ago by winning his first ever pro race at our season opener in Hangtown. We have not seen quite that same level of fire from Tomac since. He hasn't won a race since. And here he's making some moves and he's going to get Stewart. So that'll put him into fifth. But uh, we expected this guy to be winning races, not just going for top fives. Yeah, so last lap around, Barsha goes around or goes through the inside of Stewart there. And then this lap around, Stewart got, 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 guards the inside. <laughs> And, uh, and uh, Tomac goes around the outside. So welcome to the pros. And uh, you have relatively experienced guys. Tomac's on year two as a pro. And Stewart's just getting started. So great racing out here, as always, in the 250 class. Blake Baggett leading the way. Tonight, live coverage of the 24, hour of 24 hours of Le Mans continues right here on Speed. Winning this epic race takes more than skill. You must have strategy, endurance, and luck. Live coverage of the 24 Hours of Le Mans continues tonight, 11 p.m. Eastern on speed, and continues straight through the checkered flag. Don't miss it. We almost missed this guy, Darren Durham, who is in 15th right now, and uh, that's a big difference from what he had in Moto 1. Let's review the Rocky Mountain keys to the race, Jeff, for Darren. Good start. Uh, nope. No. <laughs> Didn't quite get the start. He was well outside of the top 20 at one point, moved up to 14th now. Uh, I do believe that he's using some of the home track knowledge of watching some of his lines. Uh, he's not really staying in that main groove and where the ruts are deep, he's kind of using some lines that uh, other riders might not know about. Now, earlier today, in Moto 1, it was a whole lot better than 15. This guy was leading it, and we'll show you with our Lucas Oil highlights of the first Moto. There's Durham all the way lined up on the inside. Gets a pretty good start. Nico Izzy is going to lead them to the stripe. But then Durham on the 37, going to go around the outside, switch it up, get around Nico Izzy, get the lead, and then put the hammer down, Jeff. 
And Durham took off. His lap times are fantastic. And midway through the race, it looked like he really had this thing handled. Ryan Sipes will move past Izzy to get into second. Put a little pressure on Durham, but then a few laps in, Durham had his rhythm, started pulling away, then makes a big mistake, loses the ground that he had opened up. But Sipes in second crashes out. So that leaves Durham with a big lead again, but Blake Baggett down the stretch is putting in phenomenal lap times. He catches Durham, Durham makes a mistake. Baggett's going to steal the lead. And then another mistake from Durham takes a bad line there and that allows Dean Wilson to take over the number two spot. It was tough down the stretch for Durham. But he stayed in it, but uh, nobody could touch Blake Baggett in moto uh, number one. No, unbelievable. What Baggett has been able to do down the stretch in these races has been impressive, but he has had problems. Look at the helmet. That is not the way the visor is supposed to look on the helmet. Must have taken on a crash there. So, man, we thought that this guy was almost invincible if you could just give him a good start. But now you see he's behind Cole Seeley. So it has been all sorts of shaken up here in Pennsylvania. That's crazy. You look at Blake Baggett's helmet visor, and it almost looks like that it was bolted on backwards. Yeah, I don't know it's, how uh, you could crash and make the thing flip like that. I don't understand. Unless, unless both of the side bolts are off. Well, he doesn't care, by the way. He's going after Sealy anyway, trying to make passes. I believe that would get him back up to second, because Rattray was in front of Sealy. So if both of the side bolts broke off, Okay and it spun around on the center bolt, that's how it would still be attached upside down. But impressive that it actually rotated perfectly 180 degrees. It's backwards, but it's perfectly straight backwards. He didn't care. He's going to be taking a lot of roost because the uh, visor can't catch it. So he just better start making passes, and he does. So now he doesn't have to worry about the dirt coming off the back wheel of Sealy. What wow. a recovery. Well. Rattray has just crossed the uh, finish line, and so that's going to put him, uh, well, Baggett's going to come by about 8.9 seconds behind the leader. Clearly in the first moto, Baggett had the speed to do whatever he wanted with the competitors and his teammates. So now with 12 minutes plus two laps left in this moto, we'll see if the 57 can get that drive back again, get focused, and... Uh, go after the leader, his teammate, Tyler Rattray. Well, yeah, Jeff, this has been the portion of the race, the second half, where Baggett has really made his mark. But after a crash, is it really the same circumstances? Can he bounce back, or does it take you out of your rhythm? It, it all depends. It can go either way. Mm -hmm. Right now, it looks like uh, Baggett's, he's just fine outside of that visor being <laughs> in the condition that it is. And, you know, the toughest thing may be, you know, maybe his friends kind of jabbing him about having his helmet stick or his visor sticking straight up when they watch the show. And there it is. He is down. The damage already done to the visor. And then this is tough to wrestle a bike uphill like that. Yeah, because it's muddy and it's wet. But notice he keeps the. Uh... Trying to figure out where he went now. The goal is you have to get back on the track where you came off. Well, he came Did down he go that the hill far there. off the track. Oh, okay. He went off the track to the right. It's hard to say. That uh, okay. it actually looked like it was just behind the uh, start line area. Man, so you have to re-enter the track as safe as you can. Uh, sometimes it's hard to go backwards uphill. Either way, we know this. Tyler Rattray is leading the race. I don't know about the overall. We're confused enough as how it's going out here right now. So we'll just tell you this: Rattray leading back at Sealy. Stay tuned. This July, baseball's biggest stars will gather together in the Arizona desert for one spectacular night in the summer's biggest event as Fox brings you every thrilling moment in the 2011 Major League Baseball All-Star Game. Coverage begins Tuesday, July 12th, live from Phoenix at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 Pacific only on Fox. Dean Wilson has the red background to his number 15. Why? Because he is your series points leader. But it's going to be hard to hold that points lead by the end of the day. He crashed on the first lap of this race, and he has had to fight his way through traffic. He is currently in the number nine position. And the man who is second in points, Tyler Rattray, is leading this race. Wilson right here, top of your screen, 35 seconds behind your leader. Group's actually pretty tight, especially just in front of Wilson. Stewart's right there, Martin and uh, Barsha and Tickle are right there within arm's reach. Nine minutes plus two laps to go. 
the pace that Wilson is riding at the moment, if he keeps on this pace and doesn't make any mistakes, he could catch those riders and possibly get inside the top five. Battle is on here. Eli Tomac and making tracks and going after Cole Seeley. So Justin Barsha, who was in fourth, he has had his problems. He's dropped to the back of this train. 36 is Seeley. 19 is Tomac. We're finally seeing Eli Tomac turning on the kind of speed that people expected to see from him in 2011. But Seeley's going to do his best to hold him back. Couple of Honda riders going at it. Look at Tomac. He's got some alternate lines. He's moving around a bit, and he's going to have to do that if he makes his way to make his way past Cole Seeley, who's ridden a really steady race here. He hasn't made any big mistakes, just riding a nice pace inside of the fast line. All right, so Tomac, he's got plenty of time to make this happen. You see the countdown clock top of the screen, eight minutes and two laps left in this one. But with all the rain and the mud we have here, Jeff, uh, what happens? Do you have to stick to one line? Can you, can you try different things on this track? Well, Eli has made some passes, so he knows that he's got some spots like right here. Wow. Nicely done around the outside, leaping into third. Aaron Bates, what are you hearing on the number 19 of Eli Tomac? Guys, he had mentioned how frustrated he was after that first moto. He said he just wasted way too much time trying to get past anybody that was in front of him. He said by the time those the front runners get out in front, it's just too far for him to catch up. So it's crucial for him to get a good start, like he had said, but it wasn't the best of starts for Eli. I would imagine he's going to be at the same frustration as he was during that first moto. Yeah, Jason, and now, you know, Aaron's exactly right, but He's in a podium position for this moto, but the leaders are still uh, about 20 seconds out. You know, so not getting that start, especially on a wet, sloppy track like this, really puts you at a disadvantage, but he's done a great job of flying himself into the top three. Well, we saw the graphic, his last lap, he was actually a half of a second quicker than Rattray, but when you're 20 seconds behind him, you're not gonna be able to catch the guy only making up half a second. In other words, not getting the start made all the difference. He has the speed here down the stretch, but he's going to need those guys to make huge mistakes if he wants to make a bid for the win. Dropping into the valley here, and they're headed to what they call the hip jump, as you're kind of turning and jumping at the same time. Ooh, a little short wow, there. Yeah. And that's your body, your wrist, ankles, knees, back takes such a beating when you come up short on a big double like that. Okay, that's Tomac, Colorado kid, who's actually been uh, riding and training in Texas quite a bit at uh, Andrew Short's house. Short, one of the riders that races in our 450 class. Last year as a rookie, Tomac struggled in the hot and humid races. So they decided instead of training in the altitude of Colorado, we're gonna train in the heat in Texas. And you gotta figure maybe a little more measured approach to the championship this year, Jeff. They came out really strong early and then kind of spent all their energy too early in the series last year. So do you expect maybe a surge later in the year from Tomac this year? Well, it's all about building that foundation and ramping it up and, and okay, if you started the season at one point, how do we how do we uh, improve with each passing race to where that once we hit the halfway point, now we're ready to start winning some races because especially in this class, if you can get hot by Redbud and start winning races, you can close up that gap. Whatever points you lost the first half, you can make it up and more by the time you get to the finish. Bro, you had mentioned about spending too much energy. Well, a guy that had told me he was suffering from arm pump during Moto 1 was Dean Wilson. He said he exerted a ton of energy trying to make a pass on his teammate, Tyler Rattray. But he said, one of these things during this crash, during this moto, it's going to be a tough deal for him to catch up. He needs to stay calm and breathe in order to finish off this moto. Yeah, Aaron, gr uh, great report there. And because the thing about it, Dean Wilson did that in the first moto. Yeah. Now he starts outside of the top 10, is moved up to eight now. How's he going to be feeling after this one? Well, good news, Dean. We don't have three races. You can have six days to recover before the next round. There's Eli Tomac. He is all alone in third. Cole Seeley behind him. Blake Baggett in front of him, and Tyler Rattray leading them around at high point. Fans here have been treated to some great racing, unpredictable racing, most importantly, today. Speed's coverage of the Lucas Oil AMA Pro Moto Cross Championship is brought to you by Progressive Insurance, number one in motorcycle insurance. By Rockstar Energy Drink. Rockstar Energy Drink supports the active Rockstar lifestyle and is now available in 18 amazing flavors and 19 countries worldwide.
Looking at the 28 of Tyler Rattray in a 250 class that is generally ruled by young kids fresh out of the amateur ranks. A lot of them not even in their 20s yet. You got this guy, a veteran from South Africa, Lethal. But we do have a second year rider. Oh, no, not and again. Blake is he doing Baggin, it again? He's back. Look at the top there of your screen. Is. There's the 57, Blake Baggett, who seemingly at will can turn faster lap times than anyone on the track by like three or four seconds. You're not supposed to be able to do that. It's supposed to be tenths of a second here and there. He makes up multiple seconds per lap, and here he comes again. He's going for the W. He already has one in Moto 1 today. He was your winner, so he's got two minutes, 40 seconds, plus two laps, possibly. So roughly about six minutes of racing here. And he's doing it against Rattray, who is known as maybe the strongest, fittest, steadiest rider in this 250 class. And Baggett doesn't care. Second half of these races, even after a crash this time, he finds his rhythm, he finds his flow, and he has gone from what? About 10 seconds back to two and a half seconds back. He has just completely been on fire here today. Shown speed that other riders just don't. Oh, look at the left rider. I thought he was going to come on in front of it, but see right here, he oh, man, nails, it. nails the hip double, and look how much time he picks up on his teammate. This Two is crazy. To go. What kind of confidence does it give you when you could not see the leader, and then all of a sudden he's on the horizon, and you can read the jersey? Yeah, he's just in the zone right now. That's just, uh, I mean, you're in that position, and you just can seem to ride at this pace with this intensity, that, and, and nobody else can match you. That's really what it comes down to. He's driven, he's got a high intensity, and he is charging all the way. Maybe he's got an aerodynamic advantage. He's got good downforce with the way that flies. I don't understand how you thought maybe the crash would be the one thing that could take him out of his rhythm. Nope, it's the classic Blake, Bag Blake Baggett story. Ladder laps, no one can match this kid's lap times, and now he's just trying to find a line to make a pass on Rattray. He's done the damage, he's caught him. Well, and, that, and that's... Uh, Baggett can do this because of fitness and because he trains with intensity, he practices with intensity, he becomes accustomed to having his heart rate and his breathing patterns uh, in this situation, which are bound to be maxed out at this point, but just drawing some great lines around the track. Just uh, here it comes. Big Valley, they're going to jump back out and head toward the uh, finish line stretch. Baggett on the outside. Can he pass him here? Rattray's going to take the line away. And Rattray, boy, he is being stubborn with his teammate. Just held him pinned all the way up around the outside. Another left-hand turn coming up. Unbelievable that, that Baggett stayed in it on the outside. There he goes. And he still makes the pass. So Blake Baggett takes the lead from Tyler Rattray, and Rattray did everything he could to prevent that from happening. He pushed Baggett all the way to the yellow markers. There was yes. no more room no. left. Baggett never backed off the throttle. I mean, just fearless riding out of the 57 Pro or Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki rider, Blake Baggett. That, that, I'm speechless. You mentioned the fitness. You don't get much stronger than Tyler Rattray. I mean, that guy is as fit and as strong as it comes, and even he has no answer for Baggett late in these races. Speed and intensity. Right now, Baggett is just riding at a different level than anyone else on the track. Unbelievable. Well, one thing that hasn't changed is Kawasaki up front. That team has been there all year long. It's just a different rider on the bike leading it right now. Mitch Payton, Greg King, they're happy about what their team's doing right now. Two laps to go for Blake Baggett, kid out of Grand Terrace, California, leading round three at the Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship from High Point Raceway. It's the Rockstar Energy Drink National. That's not the way a motocross helmet is supposed to look. This kid was leading the race, crashed, obviously head first, damaged the helmet, got back up, made up ground, passed Tyler Rattray, and is now back in the number one spot, Jeff Emmy. Yeah, this has been uh, just such an impressive ride. As he comes by uh, these rollers, watch it, just comes by uh, yet another uh, lap drive. That looks like Nico Izzy that he's by. But Baggett has just flowed around this track as, as the track went away and it got more rutted and more difficult. He just never backed off the intensity. He's been uh, 
so confident on the bike. He just does whatever he wants with the machine. Now, I'm going to throw this one at you. Uh, the other riders on the Pro Circuit team all weigh about the same. They're 160 some pounds. You got uh, Tickle and Rattray, who are really stout built guys. You got the, the long, lanky Dean Wilson. And then you got this kid who is short and skinny. He's lightweight. And uh, there have been some rumblings that he has an advantage because they're all in identical equipment otherwise. What do you think about that, Jeff? Well, they say great things come in small packages. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, it, it, it is what it is. You know, we're all built differently, and uh, you use uh, whatever you have. I mean, you know, he could use excuse, hey, well, I'm just not as big and strong as you guys. Okay, so, but physical fitness, he is obviously doing the work with his trainer, Eldon Baker, and uh, just really showing determination. And, uh, you know, you can't ride a motorcycle like this without putting in the hard work, training, building your strength doing your motos and uh, preparing yourself mentally for uh, you know these type of races. And you might think with a kid that has this kind of speed and talent, that this was predestined and he was going to dominate races like this, but uh, it wasn't quite so easy. He was good as an amateur, won some races, but didn't exactly dominate. And then when he graduated, Kawasaki only had room for one rider on this team. They picked Wilson. So uh, Baggett Road for Suzuki last year got a podium at this race at High Point, and that really sealed the deal as we get to our last lap here. Then people knew, okay, as a pro, he's got something special. Then they had an opening in the team when uh, some other riders graduated up to the 450 ranks this year. Baggett's on the squad. He's repaying them with victories. So Mitch Payton, uh, man, unbelievable what this team has done this year. This might be their best year yet, and they've won so many darn races. Check it out. Mitch had to watch this, two teammates almost taking each other down, Jeff. Yeah, and uh, Baggett was almost off, I mean, out, off the track and just the next turn, he just stays right in it, just confident. I mean, that's the type of riding and the type of confidence around other riders that you usually see from riders that have 20 wins under their belt, where they've dominated the complete uh, series for a year or two and they just feel like they belong in front and hey, you guys are in the way. This is the first time here in the last month we've we've seen uh, Baggett at the opening round ride like this. Had a couple of problems here and there in the next couple races, uh, but just dominating once again. He he has a feeling of belonging that hey, this is my series. I'm going to take control of this thing. Wow. Yeah. He has a 7.3 second lead now over Rattray, Tomac third, Sealy and Tickle riding out in the top five. Wilson has climbed his way up to eighth. Now the problem for Baggett is the points. Terrible weekend last time we raced, which was at uh, Freestone in Texas, who's leading the first moto, crashed. So he didn't knock himself out completely, didn't have a concussion, but he was a little bit uh, wobbly yeah. in the second moto. So he tried to survive and just score some points. So he won the first round. It appears he's gonna win the third one. But that tough day at round two means that uh, Rattray and Wilson will still be ahead of him in the series standings, but you just keep riding like this, and you'll erase that points deficit quick. Yeah, that's that's the best way. Just go win the motos. Each moto to win pays 25 points. Uh, Baggett on the day today is going to get maximum amount of points, and there's still going to be nine races, 18 more motos in this championship uh, before we figure out who the 2011-250 uh, champion will be. Yeah, and it's so hard to predict. You know, last year at this time, uh, Trey Kennard was struggling, had a bunch of crashes at this race on, in the rain and was really having a tough time. And then halfway to the year, he caught fire and came from way back in points to take the championship. So, so hard to predict what's going to happen over the long haul, but we can predict this. He's going to win this race. Blake Baggett wins at high point. And he wins both motos, so that makes the math easy on us. And I, I think Mitch is even surprised at what this kid's doing in the second half of these races. Can't take the goggles off because of the visor being pointed the wrong direction. But he's pointed the right direction to get to the podium. We'll talk to him when we return. Feel your passion for motorcycle racing with Speed Motorcycle Text Alerts powered by Yamaha. Get the latest moto racing results and breaking news as soon as they become available, sent right to your phone. Text MOTO to Speed 3 for the alerts now. Give you the recap here of our 250 class racing, the Lucas Oil race recap of the Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship. Here's how this one went down. Critical to get a start on a muddy race day like this. Kawasaki's battling up front. Tyler Rattray had the lead. Dean Wilson steals it, and then it gets all crazy here, Jeff. Yeah, Dean Wilson comes by his teammate, clips him. That sets him back, but Wilson, 15, keeps the lead. 
But watch at the left of your screen, Wilson lands with oh. the lead, puts the Kawasaki in the mud. So he was way back. Blake Baggett and Harris to lead, then he has problems. He crashes. That's going to leave Tyler Rattray in the number one spot. We thought Baggett was out of this one. But late in the race, unbelievable speed, and he takes the lead for the second time. Baggett's intensity could not be matched by anyone. 1-1 one, one on the day for Blake Baggett. And a dominant 1-1. One, one. Give you the results here from Moto2. Baggett takes the win. Another solid day points-wise for Tyler Rattray with that consistent second-place finish. And Eli Tomac finally showing some of the speed we expected to see from him this year. Second half of that moto takes a solid third. There's your top ten. Well done by Malcolm Stewart. Get that top ten. And let's go down to Aaron with our winner. I think you guys said it best. Nobody was going to be able to match Blake Baggett's intensity. But, Blake, we saw the aftermath with your visor after the crash. But take us through what happened. You know, the track's so slippery that I uh, just got away from me. I had like I seen I had 10 seconds, and I was just like, all right, be smooth, be smart. Got on the gas a little hard. It broke loose. High sided big over here, and the banners got my face, my shoulder, and uh, you know just got up and fought it back. But I got to give it up to my team: Monster Energy, Pro Circuit, Kawasaki, Parts Unlimited, Thor, Alpine Star, Traxxas, Volcom, Vans, my mom, my dad, my trainer, Alan Baker, and my girlfriend. Congratulations on your hard charge today. Blake Baggett's got the win. We'll show you some of the other races where he's going to try to win races. We will be in Bud's Creek in Mechanicsville, Maryland next weekend, not too far from here in Pennsylvania. Then we go a mile high up at Lakewood, Colorado, just outside of Denver. Then it's Red Bud in Buchanan, Michigan on July 4th weekend, followed by the infamous Sand Track in Millville, Minnesota. All the 250 class coverage, of course, right here on speed. That's her Toyota moving forward schedule. Fans are gathering down by the podium to congratulate our top riders today, and we will talk to more of them when we return. Tyler Rattray didn't get the win today, but he's got to feel good about his position in points, that's for sure. We'll be right back. Speed's coverage of the Lucas Oil AMA Pro Moto Cross Championship is brought to you by Lucas Oil. Made in America, sold to the world. And by the 2011 Toyota Tundra, one of the most capable half tons ever. Welcome back to Southwestern Pennsylvania, round three, the Lucas Oil AMA Pro Moto Cross Championship in the 250 class. Here are your overall results for the day. Easy math, Blake Baggett wins race one and race two. So that gives him the overall weekend victory. Rattray and Tomac up on the podium. And the big difference, Rattray makes up seven points. You can see on Dean Wilson giving him the points lead. Let's send it down to Aaron with Tyler Rattray. Tyler Rattray may have not left here with the victory, but you're leaving here with the points lead plate. Tyler, what does this moment mean to you? at this point with three three rounds under the book. Oh man, it's still early, you know. Um, when I won my world championship in Europe, we changed the plate, I think, maybe four or five times. So it's still early on in the championship and I'm not really worried about the red plate. Just uh, trying to get up here every weekend, you know, Blake wrote an awesome second moto in there and uh, I struggled a bit, you know. Um, I think I struggled the whole day on this track. It, uh, last year was obviously a lot better for me, but uh, no complaints, I still came away with the second, which, uh, which I'm happy with, and I uh, just want to thank everyone from the guys from Monster Energy, Pro Circuit Cars, like here. Well, it's a limited thaw. Uh, my stepdad, my mom, my wife, and my baby. Thank you. Show you the series standings. It is still very close. You see Wilson only two back. Baggett, after the, even the bad race at round two at Freestone, he's in the hunt. Tomac Cunningham, top five. Let's send it back down in the box with Aaron. Eli Tomek said he was extremely frustrated that you had wasted just too much time, Eli, making that pass. How did you feel about your second moto? Um, it definitely went better. Once again, I had to work my way up from like a, a top 10 start. And uh, yeah, I mean, third place is, is pretty good. I'm excited just to get on the box, but I definitely can get better. Download the free Speed app for your phone. Keep Speed at your fingertips and fuel your passion for racing between events with Speed on your phone. Get the latest stats, results, and news as soon as they become available. Download the app from iTunes or the Android market now. Well, we're not taking a break in this tour for a while now. We're going to go four straight weekends at races, so it's a grind. We'll be at Bud's Creek in Mechanicsville, Maryland next week. Saturday night, we'll have your 250 class coverage, of course, on speed. And we'll just keep on going. We'll be in Colorado. We'll be in uh, Michigan. And then we'll be in uh, uh, Minnesota. And the first motors, of course, are live on Fuel and on AlliesSports.com every week. So 
not too hard to find the coverage of the toughest motocross racing series in the world. All right, so there it is. Blake Baggett has won both motos. A dominant performance today, and he is starting to inch closer to this series points lead. Great racing in the hills of High Point. We'll be racing in the hills of Bud's Creek next time, so don't miss that. For Aaron Bates and Jeff Emig, I'm Jason Wygant. Thanks for joining us for the Rockstar Energy Drink High Point National. Congratulations to our dominant winner today, Blake Baggett.